मेरे प्यारे बच्चों होप एवरीथिंग इज फाइन एफ एम जी एग्जाम इज ओवर नाउ एंड देर इज मिक्सड काइंड ऑफ रिएक्शन लाइक पेपर वन वॉज लिटिल ट्रिकी एंड पेपर टू वॉज इजी टू मॉडरेट एनी वेज इट इज अ बैलेंस काइंड ऑफ थिंग एंड वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग अ वेरी गुड आउटकम विद अवर रिजल्ट टूडे वी आर बिगिनिंग विद ओबीजी रिकॉल क्वेश्चन डिस्कशन and uh, i have collected 44 questions from opskyni very good evening to all and let's begin with our opskyni discussion today question number 1 uh, which i collected from a students was uh, this following image is used for so this image was given a few students said that uh, image given was little different but uh, 90% students said that this was the image which was given and we have discussed very well in our classes when we were discussing congenital valve formations of uterus that radio opaque dye is instilled through leach wilkinson cannula and this is the leach wilkinson cannula and leach wilkinson cannula is used to instill radio opaque dye for hysterosalpingography so the image given was leach wilkinson cannula and this is used for hystro selfing go graphy and the options uh, which a student gave me were whether it is used for hysteroscopy or for mtp or for hysterosalpingography or endometrial aspiration biopsy so without any doubt if this image was given this is used for hysterosalpingography which is popularly known as hsg let's move to another question Question number two: Identify the image, and this image was given. And the options were central placenta previa, and the second confusing option was abruptio placenta. Other two options uh, they were not at all related to this condition, as the students told me. So this image was given where placenta was overlying internal log. So you can see here this placenta is overlying internal log, and abruptio placenta is when. there is separation premature separation of placenta and all the students told me that placenta was intact on uterine wall and it was covering internal log so without any doubt again a chocolate question it is central placenta previa the questions were so simple few questions were so simple that uh, uh, in fact uh, i am uh, what to say there are no words the third chocolate question third question a lady presents for mtp with 6 weeks pregnancy in fact i was thinking what i will explain in recall session few questions were so simple that we have discussed in our classes like anything multiple times so in fact what, what what to discuss in the recall session the questions became so simple a lady presents for mtp with 6 weeks pregnancy which protocol is followed so medical abortion protocol and medical abortion protocol we all know mifepristone is not used alone mifepristone is not used with methotrexate these days mifepristone is used along with misoprostol this is a repeat question from last exam and mifepristone is 200 mg which is given on day 1 and after 48 hours we give misoprostol 800 mg vaginally opinion of two doctors is required for mtp again a chocolate question according to latest mtp amendment act opinion of two i don't want to pick up much of your time now for these chocolate question we have discussed multiple times in our classes according to the amendment of the mtp act now opinion of two doctors is required for mtp if gestational age is between 20 to 24 so less than 12 no pay 12 to 20 no 16 to 20 no 20 to 24 previously according to the old act opinion of two doctors were required between 12 to 20 but now it is required between 20 to 24 a lady presents with 8 cm sized ovarian cyst 8 cm sized ovarian cyst with ultrasound showing ground glass appearance and this ground glass appearance of ovarian cyst is seen in endometriosis so this is a endometriotic cyst and what is the best management for her and we know with our classes we have discussed very well in our classes if it is a 8 cm size cyst then the only management could be cystectomy we will remove the cyst 
will not go for cyst aspiration. The ground glass appearance of ovarian cyst is seen in endometriosis. Again, a chocolate question. Questions were so chocolate that really I am feeling what to explain. My students know everything. A 60-year-old postmenopausal lady presented with bleeding per vagina. What is the most likely cause? 60 years old and postmenopausal lady. What is the most likely cause of bleeding in a postmenopausal lady? It is endometrial atrophy. Most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding is endometrial atrophy. And if most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding in India is asked, then of course answer would be cervical cancer. Most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding in developing countries like India is cervical cancer. If developing countries or India is not given an option, then it would be endometrial atrophy. Most common site for genital TB is fallopian tube. Again, a chocolate question. What to discuss, what to say. <laughs> Bache sab jante hai. Most common site for genital TB, earliest site for genital TB is fallopian tube, ampulla of fallopian tube, which is an MCQ factory. Most common site of fertilization, most common site of ectopic pregnancy, earliest site of genital TB, most common site of genital TB. Chocolate question. What is the best management for septic uterus? Again, a chocolate question. <laughs> Discussed multiple times in our classes. Hysteroscopic resection of septum. The best management for septate is hysteroscopic resection of septum and metroplasty is used to repair bicornuate uterus and uterine didactyl. Next question. A lady presents with seven weeks seminoria and shock. A mass is palpable in lower abdomen. Serum beta SCG is positive. What is most likely? Again a chocolate question. She is pregnant, seven weeks of seminoria. She is presenting in shock and a mass is palpable, which is the adnexal mass of course. Another clue is serum beta SCG is positive. So what is most likely? She is presenting in shock. It is a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy. It can't be nephroclastinosis anyway. Another question. Question number 10. Which anticoagulation, again a chocolate question, we have discussed very well in anticoagulation protocol in heart disease in pregnancy. Which anticoagulation coagulant is not used in first trimester of pregnancy? Warfarin is not used because it crosses placenta and leads to fetal warfarin syndrome or contrary syndrome. This is why up to 12 weeks we use heparin. Then after 12 to 36 we use warfarin. Then we stop these 24 hours before delivery. Then 6 hours after vaginal delivery or 24 hours after cesarean, we can restart any of these. We have discussed this multiple times in our classes. Again, a chocolate question. 24 year old lady and she is presenting at 6 weeks postpartum. 6 weeks postpartum and willing to avoid pregnancies for at least 3 years is best by copper tea. She is in lactating stage. She has just delivered. So OCP can't be used because OCP suppress uh, breast milk secretion, condones higher failure rate, progesterone only pills, then irregular bleeding. So copper tea is best for spacing for three years. She has presented postpartum. Chocolate question. Identify the image. Again, a chocolate question. Yaar. What to discuss is because section Gaini was such, such, such chocolate this time. Identify the image and this image as you can see, it is clearly, this arrow is clearly pointing here. Let me use different color to show you. Arrow is clearly pointing a connection between urinary bladder and vagina. So what else it can be other than a psychovaginal fistula? And they just asked it a chocolate question. They didn't ask anything beyond it. What is this? That's all. So it is a case of vesicovaginal fistula. Again, a chocolate question. What is the best management for cystocele and rectocele? Few students said that only cystocele was asked. Few students said that rectocele was asked and cervix was protruding out. So, anyways, the best I could recollect is for cystocele, it is anterior colporephy and for rectocele, whatever it is. The core of question is, if it is cystocele, then management is anterior colporephy. If it is rectocele, management is posterior colporephy. And if both cystocele 
and rectal seal were there, then answer would be anterior corpor FE plus posterior corporoperineal FE. If only cisto seal was there, anterior corpor FE. If only rectal seal was there, posterior corporoperineal FE. Drug of choice for hyperthyroidism in pregnancy, again a chocolate question, propyled thiouracil. For in pregnancy, it is propyled thiouracil. Otherwise, we can use carbimazol, etc. You know very well. Identify the sign at eight weeks of pregnancy with dusky blue color of vagina. It is a Chadwick sign, bluish violet discoloration of vagina due to venous congestion. Again, a chocolate question. We have discussed this chocolate question multiple times in our classes. Secondary, again a chocolate question. Secondary postpartum hemorrhage developed after 24 hours to 12 weeks. And what is the primary postpartum hemorrhage within 24 hours of delivery? In fact, while discussing this recall session, I am not able to understand what to discuss because there were many of the OBG questions were single liners, they were chocolate questions. Except a few, except a few. So primary is within 24 hours and secondary is after 24 hours to 12. Question number 70. Chemicals used in given contraceptive is, so today, clear cut image of today was given and bachcha bachcha jantta hai, today contains nonoxidol 9. So no need to discuss any differential diagnosis. Today means nonoxidol 9, which is a spermicidal agent. Folic acid deficiency cause, again, bachcha bachcha janta hai, has been discussed in multiple subjects. Folic acid deficiency causes neural tube defects. This is why folic acid is given to a pregnant lady to prevent the incidence of neural tube defect. Chocolate question. Placenta in humans is hemochorial. Again, a chocolate question. Placenta in humans is hemochorial because it is in contact with blood on either side. On fetal side as well as maternal side. What to discuss here? Sex determination is legal when? When it is false. Sex link disorder. Then only it is legal. Then it is an indication for determination. Otherwise not. It is illegal. Maximum risk of ureteric injury is in which hysterectomy? So maximum risk of injury to ureter is in Verdheim hysterectomy. We have discussed multiple times. So, most common cause of urethrovaginal fistula is which hysterectomy? Verdine hysterectomy. A pregnant lady presents with pigmentation on face. What is most likely? Chocolate question we have discussed multiple times in our classes. It is melasma or cloisma or pregnancy mass. A lady presents with amenorrhea for six months. Many children have told Sir, you have studied a lot. Many students said, Sir, you taught a lot. You have studied 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 a lot. A lady presents with amenorrhea for six months after curettage. What is most likely? Asherman syndrome. After curettage? It is Asherman syndrome because of formation of fibrous bands in endometria. Galactokinesis is due to hormone released by. We have discussed, again a chocolate question, we have discussed multiple times in our classes. Mammogenesis is due to estrogen progesterone. Lactogenesis is due to prolactin. And galactokinesis is due to oxytocin. So galactokinesis is due to hormone released by. Oxytocin is released by posterior pituitary. Fine. According to WHO, again, has been discussed in multiple subjects. According to WHO, maternal death is death in pregnancy and within six weeks after delivery. That's maternal death. Single liner, chocolate question. A lady was treated by tamoxifen. She was treated by tamoxifen for cancer breast. She presents with bleeding per vaginum. Which complication is likely? We all know tamoxifen is selective estrogen receptor modulator. So, in, in the risk factors of endometrial cancer, we have clearly written history of treatment with tamoxifen. So, if she is taking tamoxifen, there is risk of cancer endometry. Very simple question. Because tamoxifen is estrogen agonist on endometrium while estrogen antagonist on breast. All of the following are actions of estrogen except we have this chocolate question. Again a chocolate question. Discussed multiple times in our classes, in our various sessions. Estrogen is responsible for profuse cervical mucus. 
glorified cells or superficial cells or eosinophilic cells, they are in abundance under influence of estrogen. But tech phenomena is related to progesterone. So profuse cervical mucus is related to estrogen. Glorified cells are related to estrogen. But tech phenomena is related to progesterone. So answer here because it is except tech phenomena. Again a chocolate question. Again a chocolate question. Question number 28 is a chocolate question. We have discussed multiple times in our classes. Earliest histological feature of secretory endometrium is vacuolation. Same sentence we have discussed multiple times in our classes. So, vacuolation is histological feature of proliferative phase of menstrual cycle or secretory phase of menstrual cycle. Very nice secretory phase of menstrual cycle. Question number 29. A lady presents with postmenopausal bleeding. What is the next step? So, there were two questions related to postmenopausal bleeding. First one was endometrial atrophy. Then it is ultrasound. What is the next step? Whenever she comes with irregular bleeding, postmenopausal bleeding, we do ultrasound to see how much is the thickness of endometrium. And if thickness of endometrium is more than 4 mm, then we go for endometrial aspiration biopsy. But here, endometrial aspiration biopsy was not given in question. The question clearly states that she is presenting with postmenopausal bleeding. So the first step would be a transvaginal sonography. Few students said that TBS was written in option. Few said ultrasound. Anyway, whatever it was, whether it was ultrasound or transvaginal sonography, it's the same. So answer is ultrasound or TBS approach. Chocolate question. This was a little confusing question and I was searching for, I was searching, uh, I took two, three days to search for the correct statement of the question. I was searching a lot, talked to many students, but no one gave me the exact sentence for this question. Anyone who knows the correct sentence for this question, you can WhatsApp me on my number 7042109992 about this question because I, I'm not sure what was this question. The best I could gather is a G1P1 lady presents with hirsutism and BMI is 23. And the HSD image was also given in this question. The only confusional thing better here is that examiner gave hirsutism in the question. And the one more word was there, aminoria. She is presenting with aminoria also. If if I am not wrong, the student said, few students said aminoria also. And this image was given. If this image was given, a student said tubal block image was given. Some said bilateral tubal block was given. Some said unilateral tubal block was given. Some said HSC was not. So I am clearly saying I, I received multiple inputs. So, if it was a tubal block, this image was given, where it is a case of tubal block, then answer is very simple, it is tubal block. And beta, if histocelpingography was normal, don't take that type, if I have marked tubal block, answer is tubal block. If this HSG image was normal, then if hirsutism and amenorrhea was written, and if tubes are patent, then answer would be PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So, the diagnosis here, or the answer in this question will depend on whether the HST image was normal or abnormal. Whether the tubes were patent or tubes were blocked. Question number 31. Ritodrin, which is a beta mimetic, Ritodrin to prevent premature labor will cause all of the following. These drugs, isoxaprin, Ritodrin, Salbutamol, Terbitalin, beta mimetics, they are not used to pre for preterm labor now because they have many side effects, maximum side effects. And the side effects of these are tremors, tachycardia, pulmonary edema, hyperglycemia. They cause hyperglycemia. This is why they are not at all used in a diabetic patient. It's not hypoglycemia. So the question is except, it is hypoglycemia. They cause hyperglycemia. Then identify the image, some image was given. And why I haven't put this image? Because I'm not sure. Some students said it was the case of septic uterus, some said unicornoid, some said Asherman syndrome. So whatever it is, uh, uh, whatever the image was there, uh, I can show you how a septic or a bicornoid looks like. So you can make out according to that what image was given to you. So this is the case of, this was the Leach Wilkinson cannula, which was asked in our exam. Direct question from our class notes, fine. 
let me show you bicarbonate sorbate once again. So this is the case of uterine didal fish. So this was not given an option. Uterine didal fish was not there. So let's move to another one, bicarbonate and septate. This is normal histocalpinography if this image was given. This is the normal HST image, normal histocalpinography where dye spill out and a spill of the dye you can see very well. So if HST image was normal in the previous question, then answer would be polycystic ovarian syndrome. Then how a septate and a bicarbonate look like? This is a septate user. If this image was given, this is a septate user. So it depends on what was given. This is why I didn't put because I thought I will show you everything. And this is the case of bicarbonate eutopus. One. A couple presents at infertility clinic with inability to conceive. Husband is tall stitched and has gynecomastia. It is uh, overlap uh, with the pathology also. Uh, so what is most likely without fail, it is a case of clin filter syndrome. In cancer cervix radiotherapy, brachytherapy, point B reference point is. So point B reference point is 2 cm above and 5 cm lateral to external loss, while point A is 2 cm above and 2 cm lateral to external loss. Again a chocolate question, question number 35. Conversion of androgen to estrogen is governed by aromatase. I think we have discussed 100 times in our class. I spoke this sentence at least 100 times in our class. The conversion of androgen to estrogen is governed by aromatase. Question number 36. A 60-year-old lady unfit for surgery. She is a 60-year-old lady and she is unfit for surgery. Presents with uterine prolapse. What is the best management for her? Bacha bacha janta hai. Again a chocolate question. Discussed multiple times. I spoke multiple times. Leaf fold called for placid. Hair growth in females is due to which hormone? When we are discussing testicular feminization syndrome or androgen insensitivity syndrome, we discuss axillary and pubic hair. They and libido, they are governed by androgens in females. Again a very, very chocolate question. So hair growth in females is due to which hormone? It is due to androgen. Question number 38. Which of the following is most common cause of bleeding for vaginum in third trimester? This question uh, I received uh, multiple inputs. Multiple inputs. Six, seven students gave me this question that it was asked. Some said most common cause of bleeding for vaginum in second trimester. Most of them said in third trimester. Few used the word antipartum hemorrhage. Anyways, the core of the question, you have to get the core of the question, most common cause of antipartum hemorrhage is abruptio placentis. So if the question was most common cause of bleeding per vagina in third trimester, then answer would be abruptio placentis. So I am confused with the exact statement of this question. Anyone who gets the correct statement, you can WhatsApp me 704210992. Or you can use my telegram and you can telegram me at Amit Gupta. Wow. Next question. Question number 39. After normal vaginal delivery, for how many days bleeding per vaginum normally last? So again, correct statement I couldn't get. Lokia word was not written, but this was written. How for how many days? Few students said it was in weeks. Few students said it was in days. So this is the normal duration of Lokia and the answer was three weeks. Question number 40, a lady presents with three months seminoria and fever. The only thing which I could get from students is these two lines that seminoria was written for three months and fever was written and rest of the options were not at all related. Answer was TB, tuberculosis. Question number 41, was about atypical endometrial hyperplasia. Again, uh, there was a debate on this question. Few students said the management was asked. Few students said that risk of malignancy was asked. So if it is the case of atypical endometrial hyperplasia, if it is simple hyperplasia with atypical cells present, risk of malignancy is 8%. If it is complex hyperplasia with atypical cells, risk of malignancy is 30%. 
and if atypical cells are present, management is hysterectomy, total abdominal hysterectomy. If she is less than 45 years, only total abdominal hysterectomy. If she is 45 or 45 plus, total abdominal hysterectomy along with bilateral selfingo operectomy. Then, question number 42. A lady presents in shock and pay law. Three days after curettage for incomplete abortion by quack. So here the curettage was done by a quack and she is presenting after three days. And this curettage was done by a quack for incomplete abortion. Now she is presenting in shock and pay law. Options. Again, this is little tricky question or tricky statement. I couldn't get it properly actually. The students are not able to give me the correct framing of the question, but with this, I am continuously asking them, any other line was written because the doctor, treating doctor was a quack. She might have presented with aminoria and quack might have understood that it is a case of incomplete abortion. So quack might have done a curator and it could be ectopic pregnancy. She might have presented with aminoria and some bleeding per vaginum and quack might have done a urine pregnancy test. It was positive. So quack thought that this is a case of incomplete abortion and quack did a curator. But in fact, the pregnancy was not inside uterus. It was outside uterus. If some supporting line was there to ectopic pregnancy, then answer would be ruptured ectopic. Otherwise, it has to be a cardiogenic shock. So I refrain myself from moving ahead. So students have to decide, have to recollect what was another line supporting cardiogenic shock or ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Question number 43, again a chocolate question. Which tumor arises from germ cell? So this germinoma is a germ cell tumor. Chocolate question. Question number 44. Identify image. And this image was given. And this is a chocolate question. This is clear cut filling defect in uterus. Dye is not filling this area. So this is a case of Asherman syndrome. So this is a case of Asherman syndrome. So with these 45, 44 questions, I would like to conclude this OBG recall session, which was a short time session because there were not much explanations because most of the questions were chocolate questions this time. I'm really feeling happy. The questions were chocolate questions, questions were easy questions. But these questions, even an easy question, even a chocolate question carries single mark. And questions appear chocolate to my loving student. Mere pyare bachyo ko questions chocolate. Kis liye lage beta? Kyunki humne ops ka hini bhoot achche se padha. We studied ops ka hini in detail. So questions appear chocolate. Kyunki tumko aata tha. Anyways, I hope these questions could contribute something in your life. And I wish you all the very best without taking any time here in this session. Because this is the time you are all enjoying. You are not in a study mode. I wish you all the best for your results. Thank you very much.